<laughs> All right, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to this edition of State of the Castle here on this beautiful, well, it's Tuesday, I'm sure it's coming to you live, in your home on Thursday. So I hope everybody's doing well. Uh, excited to bring this to you again. Um, wish we could all do this in person, but uh, we'll get there, I promise. Um, the first introduction uh, that I want to uh, have is welcome Jen Paskey. Jen comes to us um, as our Director of Human Resources. She is currently in day two, and she's just going to come on up and give herself a brief introduction. Jen. My name is Jen, like Tyler said. I wish I could meet everyone in person, but look forward to doing that uh, over this next month or so through safe social distancing visits. I've been in HR now for over 15 years. My last five years was at Waterstone Mortgage um, as the HR manager, and prior to that, I was 10 years in Target stores as HR. So worked in Delafield, Madison, and some stores in Illinois. So excited for my new adventure here at East Castle and taking on a new career of the medical field. So please uh, be nice to me, I appreciate that. Uh, personal, I have two children. I have a son, his name is Landon, and he's nine and a half. And I have a daughter who just turned eight, her name is Delaney. So second and fourth grade and less than two years apart from each other. So uh, staying at home has been very interesting this last month and a half or so. So uh, we've got a lot of family bonding time. I am engaged and uh, very much looking forward to hopefully still getting married this summer uh, at a final destination, final destination, uh, destination wedding in North Carolina. So. Yes, very excited. In spare time, I love movies. I love um, going for hikes and spending time with my kids. I'm very family oriented. Um, and I'm kind of a dork. Uh, I like wrestling. I like Pokemon Go um, and different things like that. So uh, thank you for welcoming me and I look forward to, to meeting everyone in the next coming weeks. So next person, I believe, will go back to Tyler. Thank you. All right, welcome, Jen. We're excited to have you. Um, so Jen is taking on the role that Michelle Dobler held. Michelle's doing well in her regional role, and Michelle will actually be helping in the onboarding of Jen um, as we get uh, her acclimated to the East Castle Place processes. Um, and we look forward to Jen enhancing the employee culture uh, and building those relationships. So again, welcome, Jen. The next individual that we'll bring up is Teresa Jenkins. Uh, Teresa uh, has just an update for you all, and here she is. Good afternoon, wonderful residents of East Castle Place. How are you? Um, I just want to give everybody a quick update and to let everyone know that under these hard and stressful times, if you are feeling a little lonely, feeling a little by yourself, please don't hesitate to give me a call. I'll be more than happy to come and visit with anyone. I mean, you get no more better company than myself, so I would, if I were you, I would take me up on that offer. Um, and also, I just want to remind everybody, it's also a sensitive time, so just be mindful of the phone, call, phone calls you may be getting, any scammer phone calls or anybody trying to offer up um, any monies from you or asking for credit card information, social security numbers, Please make sure that you're not giving that information out to anyone other than people that you trust or phone calls from sources that you trust. And that is all that I have for today. Give me a call. If you get too lonely, I'm here for you. Thank you. Here's Tyler. Thank you, Teresa. All right, so the next individual that I'll bring up is Eric Peterson. Eric is our Director of Facilities, and we had some questions submitted from you um, in regards to some housekeeping, as well as some um, dues uh, for uh, some drills. So Eric, take it away. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm gonna kinda go through the questions here uh, that were submitted. The first is of which is, when will apartment cleaning begin again? Uh, are there any guidelines that we can expect uh, for ourselves and residents? So just to kind of go back to the beginning, the reason we, we 
uh, suspended housekeeping, housekeeping activities was specifically to make sure that uh, we weren't um, lending aid to spreading any viruses from apartment to apartment. So we stopped housekeeping activities to limit those um, staff members and their um, going, comings and goings from our resident apartments. So we are looking at a plan to resume those housekeeping activities. Uh, the target date for that to begin is going to be May 5th. And further information will come. Um, we'll be doing that via um, hand-delivered letter. Um, so you will have your schedule and your date to expect your housekeeping activities to resume. But the target date for our two-week interval to begin will be May 5th. And that'll be a little bit of a slow start because we'll have to get caught up on some apartments. But uh, we will get back in the swing of things there. Um, and I appreciate everyone's patience while our housekeeping activities were suspended. Uh, it was certainly in the best interest of the residents and staff to um, isolate as best possible. Another question, if we have a problem with ants in our apartment, what should we do? And that's a really good question for this time of year. We're getting into spring, uh, mulch is being spread around, ants are coming back out of the woodworks. Um, so it will happen on occasion. When it does happen, it's a two-part response. First part is going to be the response on the behalf of the maintenance department. We're gonna come up, we're gonna set a bait station. We may do a little spraying if we can see the ants. Uh, so just a local um, preventative. But what we're also gonna do is we're gonna put it in our, our Batsner log. And Batsner is the pest management company we use here at East Castle Place. And they will come out um, and do a, a more professional follow-up to make sure we're getting back to the root of uh, where the ants are. Because just local spraying is just going to kill them for the moment. They'll keep coming back if we don't do something more. So they come out once every two weeks. We'll put it in the log. If it's something that's a bit more serious, we can call them out ahead of schedule. Uh, second, third question. During window washing last fall, a few screens were damaged and taken out for repair. When will they be reinstalled? Um, <clears throat> we are still working through re uh, reinstalling some of those. We kind of held off during the winter months for a bit of time. Now it's getting warm. You can expect those individuals who had window screens removed that were damaged will be replaced. If you don't get a response, you felt like maybe you've been overlooked, please feel free to give me a call. Uh, maybe your best route is to call the front desk and put in a work order, because then at least we can keep track and, and make sure that it's taken care of. The last question is, what are the instructions in case of a tornado? And um, the instructions for a tornado are very similar to that of um, what we would do in the event of a fire in some ways. We don't want, the most important thing is we don't want anyone leaving their home. A lot of times you hear about going to basement levels and sheltering. The biggest thing is that it's all about coordination and communication. So staying in your home and what you would want to do as additional is draw your, your drapes and blinds and probably head to the bathroom where you don't have windows and close the door. That way, again, it's a, it's, uh, it seems a little silly to be able to shelter in your bathroom, but in the event of a tornado, that's going to be the safest place because we're less concerned about a direct hit from a tornado because buildings have been constructed to kind of manage that and, and really it's more about the broken glass. So heading to the bathroom where there isn't the likelihood of a window blowing out is the most important thing. I hope that answers the question fully. If there's any further questions relative to our, our, uh, what to do in case of a tornado, please feel free to reach out to me directly and maybe I can explain it, uh, I can better explain it to your question. Uh, thank you for your time. I appreciate everyone's support uh, with our maintenance staff, our housekeeping and laundry. Uh, we're just doing our best to keep up during these difficult times. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Eric. <clears throat> the next individual is Lindsay Vigut, our administrator of the health center. She's just going to give us an update. Um, there's been a lot of uh, press and news that I'm sure many of you are following regarding the COVID-19 testing kits. Lindsay's gonna give us an update on that, as well as just how are we doing from the health center, assisted living, uh, memory support side of our COVID response. So Lindsay, take it away. Thank you, Tyler. Well, good afternoon, fellow residents of East Castle Place. I wish we could all be here in person, but this will do for the time being. Um, from a health center update, um, one of the questions that um, one of you proposed is, does East Castle Place have any COVID-19 testing kits or antibody testing kits? If not, do you plan on getting them? That's a great question. Um, at this time, we do not have any testing kits available 
at the community. We are working with um, area hospitals and state and local health departments um, in the greater Milwaukee area to see what our options are for testing from a resident standpoint, as well as what is the best option for staff as well if they need to be tested. At this time, we do not have the capabilities in the community to conduct this test um, or the right tools to do so. But we are working and making more strides towards getting these tests by working with the Milwaukee Health Department um, and the liaison through the Health Department who is giving us the most accurate and current guidance regarding this matter. And in regards to the antibody test, that, if you've been watching the news, is still a bit down the road. Um, we would need to get adequate testing kits just to see if people are positive or negative, likely before we're able to have an antibody test on site. But it is a topic of discussion that we talk about, I would say, daily, um, and more information to come as we get that information, and more is forthcoming from um, the state health perspective. And then my second update is just the COVID-19 update from a health center perspective, our assisted living, and our CDRF um, memory support neighborhood. Right now we have no residents, and we have not had any that have tested positive for COVID. This is a really wonderful thing that we've been able to, um, you know, I would say abstain from coming into the community thus far. Um, you know, that being said, we see light at the end of the tunnel, but it's still, um, the future is unknown. Um, during this time, we have been able to implement many different policies, including um, around hand washing, proper protective equipment for all of our staff, um, certain entering, exiting procedures, as well as really enhance our call-in process for staff um, in the greater community, which has really supported the efforts in keeping um, COVID-19 out of our building. Um, in addition, we have been able to get a hold of a significant amount of protective equipment um, that if we were to come across a positive COVID-19 um, case in our community, we would be adequately prepared to take care of that resident while also taking care of the person um, providing the care as well as the greater community. That's all I have. All right, thank you, Lindsay, and thank you to your team uh, for everything that you're doing um, and being proactive. Um, that's really helped us from a community standpoint. The next individual I'll introduce is Mike Reaver, our Director of Philanthropy. And again, I'm sure many of you have seen um, the different stimulus packages, FEMA, things of that nature. And uh, Mike has taken on some things for the community um, to see what relief we might have. So Mike, take it away. Thank you, Tyler. And as typical, when Tyler hands over the mic, I just go off and talk about whatever really is on my mind. And as a result, the first thing I really want to talk about is an event we discussed probably over the last two or three months. Many of you came with us last year to our Milwaukee Brewers tailgate party, and we announced that there was going to be a new one uh, for 2020. Um, we were uh, looking at July 26th, the game against the Pittsburgh Pirates, we actually have a block of tickets reserved for ourselves uh, for that day. I've recently been in touch with the brewers. You might be wondering why we haven't begun marketing those tickets yet for you to be able to sign up. Um, baseball season should have been well upon us by now. Um, my last conversation with the brewers actually took place two days ago. And um, as you know, there is no baseball right now. And there is, as of yet, no indication when baseball may start. And in fact, if baseball does start, there's no indication how it's going to start. There is some uh, conjecture that the teams that have spring training in Arizona uh, will play all of their games in Arizona this year, and the teams that have spring training in Florida will play all of their uh, uh, games this year in Florida. That's one theory. So instead of an American League and a National League, you'll have a, a Phoenix League and a, a Florida League. Those games in all likelihood would be played without uh, participants in the stands. Obviously that means there will be no opportunity for a tailgate party for us July 26th. If there is such a game in Milwaukee on July 26th, 
We do have the block of tickets and we'll start marketing them as quickly as we can. Um, but that's the reason why you haven't heard anything about it. We ourselves don't know exactly how this is going to come about. And so we'll keep you posted as much as possible. Now, the real reason that I'm here to talk to you today is, as Tyler pointed out, FEMA grants. Um, all of you know that East Castle Place is a 501c3. That's an IRS designation, which means we are a private nonprofit corporation. As a result of that, we are eligible to apply for and receive grants from philanthropic institutions. In many cases, that turns out to be foundations. In some cases, it turns out to be government institutions. This is one that would happen to be a government institution. FEMA, as part of the $2.2 trillion stimulus package, was given a sum of money that uh, could be distributed into communities to assist them cover additional costs that they are bearing as a result of the coronavirus uh, pandemic that we're currently under. You're probably all more familiar with the PPP, the Paychecks Protection Program. This is another aspect of that. There are several problems involved in this. First of all, the federal government has never had to do anything like this before because um, a pandemic hopefully is a once in a lifetime uh, situation. FEMA most traditionally distributes federal resources to local communities after a, a natural disaster, a hurricane, a tornado, um, something, a major flood, something of that nature. And so the infrastructure that they need to distribute the funds is being adapted from things that they've used in the past. As a result of that, they are still writing uh, the rule book on how to go about distributing the money and how we might be able to use it. But as you can imagine, um, organizations like East Castle Place have in fact um, had to bear um, additional expense because of our response to keep you safe and all of our staff safe during the coronavirus. There's the acquisition of the PPE, the personal protection equipment. Um, you all know that we're delivering meals to your rooms right now, which is an added expense to us. Um, there has been additional salary expense because of people that we put on to help clean during third shift, etc. FEMA is under instructions to create a program that potentially will assist organizations like East Castle Place to be reimbursed for those expenses. I've sat in on a couple of seminars thus far. The minimum a grant that you can apply for is $3,300. The maximum is $110,000. Um, I have another seminar coming up this week that I'll be sitting in on. There is a, a, a government process that we need to go through. I'm acquiring a federal ID number for the FEMA portal and, and uh, very, very many things that I don't need to necessarily go into. But we will be pursuing this and if there's an opportunity to get the funds, we shall. I caution you, however, though. You remember from reading and, and watching in the news, the PPP, the Paychecks Protection Program, was granted $350 billion to protect payroll for small organizations as they respond to the coronavirus, and they ran out of money within two weeks. Um, my point in bringing this up is that there is an opportunity for us to receive money, but there is no guarantee. Um, so we will be doing everything we can to become part of the allocation process and secure funds and we will keep you informed um, as, as we go on. These are expenses we're already bearing and this would be a reimbursement to us for those costs if we're able to get the money. I do have one last item for you and it involves a, uh, 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 a program of mine if you are a regular watcher of Channel 955, be sure to watch on Fridays at 11 a.m. and at 3 p.m. for a quick trivia with Mike. We really, really want this to become the highest rated program on Channel 955, and you can help us do that. Watch that show, let us know how you think it's turning out. You're gonna have a great time. Now, let me turn it back to Tyler, and he can pass it on to your next presenter. 
Thank you, Mike. And although that is a pretty highly rated program, I'm not sure it meets even a, a inkling of what Coffee with Tyler uh, is rated at at this moment in time. But I will let uh, the statistics speak for themselves, um, and I do encourage you to tune in to your Friday trivia with Mike, um, albeit the questions are questionable. Uh, with that being said, I will turn it over to Carlos as a question came up for him as well. So Carlos, take it away. Oh, Carlos has props. All right. Thank you, Tyler. Hello, everybody. I'm happy to be speaking to you today. Um, the question did come up. There was some confusion on what to do with our new reusable to-go containers. Um, I just want to remind everyone that when your meals are served to you in these hard plastic containers that they are reusable, they do not go into the trash. We are asking when you're done with your meal, you simply rinse out the containers, no need to actually wash them, just rinse them out, get rid of any food debris, place them back into your paper delivery bag and set them outside your door. We will send someone around overnight to collect all of these. Um, we do have a limited supply. Uh, we do need them back. We prefer that you not use them for um, storage of leftovers in your fridge and things of that nature. Uh, they do help to limit our flow of trash. So uh, it's a nice thing to do right now with Earth Day being tomorrow, or actually yesterday, I should say. Um, and if you have any further questions, just feel free to reach out to me. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Carlos. And I think um, in talking with Carlos and, and talking about the supply, it's something that we proactively did. And I appreciate Carlos as well as the Green Committee for supporting that initiative. Well, right now, I think there might be half the number that we started with um, less than three or four weeks ago. So if you are an individual, a resident that might have a container or two in your fridge, in your home, we do ask that you return those so that we can return the delicious food in those um, and uh, have those continue to benefit the community. The next individual is Laura Wegler and she has an update for us um, and a number of questions. So Laura, take it away. Thank you, Tyler. I do have a number of questions, so I have some notes that I'm gonna give to you. Um, and also, I do have to say that the sing-along this Saturday also is in competition with the Coffee with Tyler, as well as the Trivia with Mike. So we'll see where we get with this. <laughs> uh, first of all, uh, in regards to Channel 955, the station schedules don't always match the paper schedule. Movies are scheduled for a certain time. Some slides are repeated sometimes and others are seldom shown. So what I wanted to let you know is we set our broadcast schedule with some repetitions in mind. And we worked through some technical difficulties with these. What happened is in transferring things over to Touchtown's system, some of the um, programming bumped other programs. And so we had to repeat some of those. We seem to have worked through a lot of that technical difficulty. We did start a spreadsheet tracking concerns to try and find out what patterns were going on. Um, and our announcements as uh, slides are more important, so you might see those more. So there's different slides that come out on Touchtown. One of them is an announcement slide, and the other ones are actual activity slides. Um, the copies of the activity highlights are now going to be in the elevator, so you can see any updates. Also, Touchtown will reflect any changes. And we're looking at live streaming, which we're pretty excited about. We've been working through um, some things with that. So live streaming as well as showing DVDs for our movies. And of course, you can always email me with any suggestions or any concerns that you have in regards to Touchtown and Channel 955. In regards to our fitness center, the question was, can we have the fitness center open on a limited basis uh, for example, have people sign up for times to use the equipment and after their use, wipe and disinfect the equipment for the person next to come in. Um, we're trying to be as cautious as possible. Um, and as you can imagine, we're trying to take every precaution feasible um, for sanitation. We could not still guarantee that it would be safe uh, with the use of the equipment. And we don't want to take an additional risk uh, with an at-risk population. So we're trying to follow the precautionary measures recommended 
we'd like to be methodical in, as far as opening and reopening the gyms. As you know, um, gyms are still closed. Um, another thing is if you could ask Willie, he's interested in doing virtual training programs. Um, there's different options. Of course, you can always check out equipment from the, from the gym um, and brainstorm other ideas for working on your own personal fitness goals. Now, I wanted to bring up Zoom training. Some of you have already been experiencing and, and participating in some Zoom meetings with family and friends. Um, we now have an opportunity for you to check out um, laptops from the front desk. We have two of them available for you for checkout for Zoom meetings or for any use that you have. Uh, they'll be available tomorrow at the front desk. There's two of them and they're available for one hour of checkout. Also, we're offering Zoom training. So next Friday, the 1st of May, from 9 until 4 in the Bradford Terrace Lounge, we're asking you to sign up at the front desk. They're going to be one hour time blocks and we'll talk you through Zoom meetings, any questions you may have. We'll take you through kind of the experience. If you have any questions, you can ask us at that time. So again, that's Friday the 1st from 9 until 4 in the Bradford Terrace Lounge, and look for the sign-up sheet to be at the front desk tomorrow. Uh, a shout out to our Green Committee. So yesterday you saw the Earth Day program at 2 o'clock. There will be a repeat of it next week. Um, there's a wonderful uh, celebration that they put together. There's many movies that you're going to be watching in the evening, uh, things throughout the week in celebration of Earth Day. It is the largest international celebration with more than a billion people celebrating Earth Day. Uh, let's see, Cinco de Mayo is coming up, believe it or not, um, in two weeks on May 5th, which is a Tuesday. So we're going to be going around from room to room, and instead of your normal happy hour, we're going to have margaritas and uh, little tacos, um, chips and salsa, and you'll see a lot of the department directors participating as well. So wear bright colors. Um, we have some things that we'll be handing out. You'll see us in sombreros, little mariachi music, so it should be a lot of fun. And then um, popcorn delivery is this Friday to all apartments. It's always nice to see your faces, um, to kind of socialize, so you can look forward to that. That is tomorrow. So with that, be in good health. We think of you and hope that you all are taking care of yourselves. Thanks. Back to Tyler. Thank you, Laura. And thank you for your team, as well as thank you to uh, you, our residents out there watching, um, for putting together the cast of Connections. Um, continue putting those submissions. I'm getting a, a nod yes. from Laura behind the camera. Um, really appreciate the creativity. I know April was Poetry Month. Um, just incredible to see some of the creativity that you have, as well as um, the amount, the immense amount of, of talent behind that, which, again, um, it's a talent I do not have, so it's so appreciated uh, to see. Um, a couple of updates from, from myself, um, as, and the question is, can we meet the Board of Directors maybe introduce them at the State of the Castle meeting. Well, I think that's a fantastic idea. So, um, I know many of you uh, were able to meet Ken Kernan, our current board chair, and his wife, and that was probably about three months ago or so. It might have been at the second to last State of the Castle, the last State of the Castle we were able to do it normally. Uh, but, with that being said, um, I'm sure I can talk to the executive committee, um, which is comprised of, of five of the board members as well as the board um, of directors. I have a meeting with them on Tuesday next week. It'll be via Zoom, um, which will be interesting to do a virtual board meeting. Um, but I will put it to them. Um, and then hopefully, once this is all done and we can start having a group activities, um, you know, I'm looking outside right now, the sun is shining, that patio is begging for a party. So, once we get uh, some group uh, activities, maybe that'll be a great opportunity to do a meet and greet with our board of directors. So, I will plan that with Ken Kernan, um, Nancy O'Donnell, the board, uh, former board chair, and uh, see what board of directors are available to, to come and introduce themselves again. The Board of Directors really plays a pivotal role here at East Castle Place as the governing body uh, for East Castle Place. Uh, they provide direction um, and support to myself as well as the team, um, all with the interest in mind of, of you, our uh, residents. So, um, again, I will pass that along. I, I love the idea, and again, um, that, that 
inside garden patio uh, that I know the garden committee, I'm sure in the near future, uh, once spring is really upon us, uh, we'll start planting the flowers and, and getting that going. So um, we'll take that. The next uh, question is, what is the current policy during this COVID-19 period regarding visitors, specifically family members? So a um, couple things here. So the COVID-19 restrictions are still in place. Uh, again, I'm sure many of you are monitoring the news, watching the news, um, and again, politics aside, um, we want to do what's in the best interest of you and our staff that we are in care of. Um, so with that, we have restricted visitors, um, essentially to essential caregivers. Um, I know a few of you have reached out, a few family members have reached out and gotten creative uh, with, you know, being in the street, saying hi to grandma, saying hi to grandpa from, from some of you that have told me that, um, having kids visit um, through, through windows, on patios, things of that nature. Um, you know, that, that's still, creativity is still going to be the key. Um, we still are restricting um, all visitors that are deemed non-essential. Um, and again, that has been the most difficult part of this quarantine uh, for myself personally, uh, because I know how imperative and how important those loved ones are uh, for you. But at the same time, um, I have to ensure the safety and security of all East Castle Place residents. So at this time, the policy remains as is. Uh, it is restricted to essential caregivers only. Um, if there's questions or concerns regarding that, um, a number of you have reached out to me on a one-to-one -one basis, um, and I'm happy to continue those conversations. But at this time, um, like the restrictions that we have um, as a state um, that is safer at home, um, we will follow closely to the guidelines of the Badger Bounce Back Plan that Governor Evers issued on Monday. Um, but I will tell you that you also are continuing to be in the most vulnerable state. So I will take this at a pace that may be slightly slower as well to ensure the safety and security of you all, uh, however difficult that may be. Um, and I appreciate your, your understanding of that. But again, the policy in regards to family members as uh, with social gatherings, uh, you know, the, the essential visitors um, guidelines still are in place and I'm happy to um, put those back out. Um, I've been trying to keep you updated in my weekly communications with you as well as your family members. Again, I'll just put a plug in that if you do have a family member uh, that would like to receive information from East Castle Place about COVID-19 and the state of it, um, I'm happy to send that out via email. Just send me the email address or drop it in my box. Um, handwritten notes are great. So I hope that answers the questions again. If you have questions regarding that, uh, speak with myself or Teresa Jenkins. And then lastly, I uh, want to just give you a, a broad view update of COVID-19 uh, from a community standpoint where we stand. Um, as this is taping on uh, Tuesday, April 21st, um, we have had no additional cases of COVID-19. Um, we have had residents and staff tested. Uh, for COVID-19. However, those have come back negative. Again, I, I uh, want to commend uh, Lindsay Ashley, our Director of Nursing, and Roxanne Farr, the infection control nurse um, that is really kind of supporting and guiding East Castle Place along with myself um, from a task force perspective uh, to, to bring individuals back safely to work. Um, again, we're following county guidelines. I think I was meeting with them today and they're in touch with the county every day um, because this is still changing quite rapidly as far as the different precautions and, and different restrictions that um, and different testing as Lindsay alluded to earlier. So again, we have had no additional cases as of Tuesday, April 24th, uh, 24th, 21st. Let's try that again. You also will receive another weekly update today, April 23rd. Uh, with further guidance and, and outline, um, hopefully reinforcing the fact that we have had no additional cases of COVID-19. Um, again, uh, the measures that we take, the measures that you are taking, are, con are continuing to stro uh, show strong results. So I know I haven't worn my mask. I am socially distancing myself uh, from the team. Um, I do have my mask right here. I want to thank uh, Lori Meckley 
um, for, for making this one for me. Um, and again, I want to thank each and every one of you that I see in the hallway wearing your masks appropriately over your nose. Um, I know that this is an a interesting time. I know that this is uh, unprecedented, but I appreciate everybody's support, everybody's patience, and uh, also the acceptance of some of these pretty restrictive policies. And again, um, I think I've mentioned it before in my highly rated Coffee with Tyler, um, but this is a, a really tough time um, for, for us all, but we're all here together. Um, if any of you have family members that are on Facebook, um, we had a, a family member give uh, a donation. We were able to give our employees a water bottle, uh, some candy, and, and just uh, a name tag plate, uh, just to show appreciation. Um, on behalf of, of us at East Castle Place. And, and the slogan was, I'm a hero, ECP strong. And so I, I wanna urge you in, in kind of supporting that uh, initiative, that ECP strong. And I urge you to stay strong during this time as well, as difficult as it is. Um, Teresa Jenkins was up here earlier, and as I speak for all the directors, we're here for you. Um, I know all the directors are, are reaching out to you um, weekly or bi-weekly. Um, just checking in. Um, and although this is not um, the normal times, um, again, it is the times that we're in. So with that, um, we'll get through this. If there's any questions that any of you have after this, um, showing, premiere, whatever we want to call it, um, please do feel free to reach out to myself um, or Maureen, and we'll make sure that we field your questions uh, appropriately. Um, if you submitted a question that you still have questions on, um, I apologize, uh, but uh, let, us, let us help you out with that. So uh, with that, that does wrap up our State of the Castle for April 23rd. I appreciate each of you tuning in on this Thursday. And if you're here on Saturday, re-watching it, great. Um, and again, hopefully everybody's enjoying um, the beautiful weather outside. Um, if you are able to, um, and again, as I look outside, it's sunny. By Thursday, it could be snowing. Just kidding. I really hope not. Um, but with that, I want to wish everybody well. I want to wish you a healthy, um, stay well, and, and thank you. Um, thank you for your words of encouragement, and thank you for your support. With that, enjoy the rest of your day.